Bats totally dominated ball on the second day of the LV County Championship match between Leicestershire and Glamorgan at Grace Road, where Niall O'Brien rose above the rest with his first 100 for the home side. Leicestershire began the second morning on 221 for four, with both O'Brien and captain Josh Cobb approaching their 50s. O'Brien was there first with a cracking hit through the covers, which carried the Irishman to his half century off 62 balls, from which he'd struck five boundaries. Cobb followed suit with a firm straight drive which took him to his first 50 for some while. He didn't manage one at all in 18 championship innings last year. He'd needed 78 deliveries for his, from which he'd found the boundary rope on 10 occasions. All was going along rather nicely for Leicestershire in their first home game of the summer, and before too long this pair had helped their side beyond 250. Glamorgan were missing Michael Hogan, who was on paternity leave, although it would be fair to say that even a man of his talents may have found it difficult to extract too much from this excellent batting surface. Cobb was looking to press on when he drilled a ball from Dean Koska back to the bowler, who clung on well to remove Cobb for 63 at 257 for 5. Cobb and O'Brien had added 120 for the fifth wicket and now it was O'Brien who took over this game. He too struggled with a bat in his first season in Leicestershire Colours last summer when his top score was 67 from the 23 championship innings he had. The signs then are very encouraging for his side that the sometimes awful batting problems of last year are now well in the past. O'Brien was especially good against the bowling of Will Owen, who was hit for three successive fours as the batsman moved easily through the numbers. His maiden 100 for this county arrived in real style as he followed up that hat-trick of fours with a pulled six, as 19 runs came off the Owen over. O'Brien had gone from 83 to 101 in just four deliveries. His ton had used up only 117 in total, his second 50 coming off just 55. It was a wonderful innings filled with attacking stroke play and had included 10 fours and that six overall. He wasn't about to stop there either. He helped another ball from the very expensive Owen over the ropes. The bowler ended with figures of one for 150 from his 26 overs. Not that he was the only one to receive punishment from O'Brien, who added 72 and 18 overs with Ben Rain, who contributed only 14 of those. He was the sixth man out with the score on 329, when he went after a wide ball from John Glover to offer Jacques Rudolph a catch at slip. O'Brien's own innings of excellence was ended after lunch when he went on the pull again, but picked out Murray Goodwin. From 141 balls, O'Brien had made 133 out of his side's 343 for seven. With the Irishman now back in the pavilion, Glamorgan must have been hoping to finish off the Leicestershire innings without too many problems. But another left-hander in the shape of Rob Taylor now got in their way. Again, the runs came in a hurry as Taylor took on Koska and hit him for three bounties in three balls. Getting to 400 inside 110 overs for a full quota of batting bonus points was a rather simple task for a side who did not have many days like this with the bat last year. While a couple at the top of the order had got into the 40s, 50s were now the order of the day for the Leicestershire batsman. For Taylor, this was only his second in championship cricket and it arrived off 65 balls and innings including nine fours. He was well backed up by Jigger Naik, another to find the surface to his liking. In only 17 overs together, these two added 101. So the total stood at 434 when Taylor was bowled by Jim Allenby for a fine 63. Owen then bowled Anthony Island for three, as he became only the second Leicestershire player to fail to get into double figures. Still the runs came though, Naik was another to raise his bat on reaching a half century. It was only the fifth time in his career that he got that far. He required 59 deliveries for his, the quickest of the match so far, discounting the second one from O'Brien. Nake had found the boundary on six occasions. What made it worse for Glamorgan was that even Charlie Shrek was amongst the runs. His previous best was made against this same opposition last summer when he scored 19 not out for Kent. He raced past that as another 51 runs were added for the last wicket. Shrek making 31 of those off only 24 balls. A very good Bambi impression saw him run out, but only after his side had posted a massive 500 
in 121.4 overs. Nate was left unbeaten on 59. With all of those runs in the bank, Leicestershire's bowlers knew that they could now come racing in to fire some up the Glamorgan openers of Rudolph and Gareth Rees. The pitch was still offering very little, however, and Rudolph was soon off and running with a whole host of delightful shots, the kind of which the 32-year-old South African has been reeling off for years as he approaches 17,000 first-class runs. He would have soon realised that there were a lot to be scored here. Not even the spinners were getting any assistance, and when Nate came on, he was driven back over his head for a six by Rudolph. Reese has already shared in a century opening stand with Will Bragg in the impressive win over Surrey and he was to do so again with Rudolph as his partner as Leicestershire struggled to even create a single chance with the ball in their hands. Bragg, down at three in this game, must have wished he'd kept his opener's spot. Both men eased to their fifties before the close. Rudolph there first with his ninth four to go with that six. He'd needed 101 balls for his but you feel that this was just the start for a man with so much experience. Reese followed suit soon afterwards. His half century was actually a little quicker, taking him 97 balls to reach. He got to his with his seventh boundary. Leicestershire would have been working out by now that they would have a long time in the field in this innings unless things changed dramatically on day three. Glamorgan will go into it on 126 without loss, which still leaves them a massive 374 runs behind. Leicestershire would have been hoping to bat only once in this game, but their bowlers will have to do a lot more if that's going to be the case from here. Rudolph will go again on 63, with Reese on 53.